Welcome back everybody! Today we will be painting our salt dough animal sculptures. Let's get started. I am using acrylic paint. It provides an even consistent covering over my salt dough sculpture and also leaves a bit of a shine once it dries. However, you can use absolutely whatever paint you have on hand. We know from class that acrylic paint does not wash off of clothes. So please wear a paint shirt and roll up your sleeves. You will notice that I'm painting both my dog and my cat with an initial base of white. This is called priming. It provides a smooth, even surface for the rest of my colors, and it prevents my salt dough from absorbing the vibrant colors of my paint. Now that I've primed both of my sculptures and waited for the paint to dry, I can begin painting them. I'm going to start with my cat's beautiful orange fur. For this project, I'm being inspired by my grandma's cat, Rachel. She was a very sweet girl. She loved naps and belly rubs, almost more like a dog than a cat. While she passed away last year, I'm sure she's waiting for all her humans at the Rainbow Bridge. Now that I have my cat's fur painted, I will go ahead and add the finer details, like the whiskers. You'll notice that I'm not doing exactly the neatest job at painting right now. That's because the whiskers are so small and very hard to paint. But that's okay, because I can just go back and touch things up once that gray paint is dry. And I can do this exact same thing with any of the brown paint that falls out of the lines too. While that paint dries, I'll move on to painting the pink parts of the ears. You might have to go back and forth between painting these small pieces, but your final beautiful artwork will be well worth it. Now that I've touched up my mistakes, I can move on to adding some small details and finishing touches to make my work its very best. I am layering my paint colors to add a bit more interest to my sculpture. I can also go back and add some fur texture around my cat's face. For that, I'm using different values of oranges and yellows. Finally, to make my piece really pop, I'm going over those oranges and yellows with a little bit of white. This acts as a sort of highlight. I can even help make my sculpture look more three-dimensional by adding highlights to the insides of the ears and on the nose. Finally, I am going to carefully paint the insides of my cat's eyes with some black. If I mess up at this spot, I can just wait for the black paint to dry and touch it back up with white. And that's it. Let's move on to our dog. For my dog sculpture, I'm going to be inspired by my childhood buddy, Patch. He was a stuffed Dalmatian, and we did absolutely everything together, including making art. I will begin with painting Patch's eyes brown. I needed a couple coats of brown because my brown paint is a little bit transparent or see-through. Then I can move on to painting the black spots on Patch. My black paint is not like my brown paint. It is not very see-through at all. We call this opaque. Luckily, my white paint is also very opaque, so it could cover over any mistakes I make with the black very easily. Just as I did before with my cat sculpture, I am going to slowly and carefully 
paint the black insides of my dog's eyes. Once my black paint is dry, I'm going to add a highlight inside my dog's eyes. In the meantime, I can paint some more spots on Patch. After all, he is a Dalmatian. paint the tiny dots around Patch's muzzle, I'm actually using the end of my paintbrush dipped in paint. This creates an easy polka dot. As I continue waiting for my black paint to dry, I'm going to mix up some gray for Patch's nose. My gray is lighter than my black and darker than my white. We know that the lightness or darkness of something is called its value. Lastly, I can use some red to paint Patch's tongue. When my red base is dry, I can mix some red and white to make a pink to add a highlight. We know that because pink is a light red, it is called a tint to make a color light you add white. It's hard to see here, but I've painted a pink tint over Patch's tongue. I can then finish off my sculpture by using white to add a very bright highlight on Patch's tongue, nose, and inside his eyes. I felt like the white in Patch's eyes was a bit too wide, so I went back and painted with some black, leaving just a sliver of highlight. And that's it. We now have two lovely painted salt dough animal sculptures. Before I go, I want to show some awesome examples of the pet portraits I've received from students since my last video. Some artists gave the salt dough a try, and others used more traditional media. Some of us focused on drawing more realistically, and others went for more abstract art. For example, I love the colors in Ella's dog, Tinkerbell, here. Others got really creative, like Taylor and Miranda here, who used green food coloring to dye their salt dough. We didn't stop at just dogs or cats, either. I also got lots of submissions of beautiful birds, like flamingos, parrots, and toucans. Some of us even drew digital art. Some of us even added our own unique twist to our sculptures. How creative is the fish Lauren made here? Those of you who even included a photo of your animal model added an extra smile to my day. I'm sorry I can't include all of these submissions of your beautiful animal art. If I did, we'd be here for another hour or so. But I can't wait to see more of what you make and I'll include new artworks in our next video. If you are in grades 4th through 8th, simply upload your work to our Art Google Classroom. And if you're in kindergarten through 3rd grade, take a picture and have your parents send it to me through my school email. I can't wait to see all the unique and fantastic works of art you create. In the meantime, stay healthy and arty on!